This episode of American Outdoors is focused on a series diagnosing and repairing the gauge clusters of uh, GM trucks and cars from the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. And if you've driven any of these, you've probably experienced the gauge clusters where the voltmeter reads all the way to the left, the oil pressure gauge always reads to the right, the speedometer doesn't work, the fuel system reads uh, a quarter tank when you leave the house, a half a tank when you get to the post office, three quarters of a tank when you get to the bank, and full when you're home. Uh, the temperature sensor, which reads hot when it's warm and warm when it's cold, and well, these clocks, I'm not sure if they ever really worked at all. Anyhow, today I'm focusing on the temperature gauge and uh, diagnosing and repairing the electronics for your cooling system. This gauge cluster is out of an old mid-70s Chevy square body truck. You can do all of the work while everything is still intact in your car truck. It just is easier for me to explain and I can show you up close without having to get contorted under a dash or a hood where things run and how they operate. But this is about all you need. Uh, a battery, black wire for ground, red wire for power, a blue or a colored wire for heat power, and a multimeter. That's about it. I'm not good with math. I uh, can't count backwards. I flunked math in school. I can only spell the, the uh, numbers 2 and 9, uh, and I can figure this out. So this is for dummies. I'm going to make this as simple as I can so that you can understand and do this yourself at home. Normally you can narrow down the issue with your uh, temperature gauge to four problems. The gauge itself has failed, the circuit is malfunctioning, of which half of that circuit is your ground wire, a malfunctioning temperature sensor, or a circuit board, which is this. I'll add that the back of these gauges do have a resistor, and if you're using a multimeter to check resistance on these, they have been known to go bad. However, almost all the aftermarket gauges for these vintage cars have this uh, technology built into the gauge now, so there is no resistor. So I don't even include that. If you have a bad resistor for the cost, you might as well go ahead and just replace the gauge. It takes me between 10 and 15 minutes to remove the gauges from a square body Chevrolet truck. But before you do that, diagnose your sending unit first. It's easy to get to and it's easy to check. So if I want to do a cursory inspection on a truck to verify the gauge is working, I go in here and you can see I pulled this out of the barn and this gauge is right at about 100 degrees. I started it up, let it run for a minute or two, backed it out, shut it off. So I go under the hood and I'm going to go to the sending unit and I'm going to unplug the sending unit wire. Now you can ground this to the frame if you want. What I'm going to do, so I'm certain, I've already run a battery cable from the battery over here. This is more or less an extension cord. And I am going to attach the negative uh, cable to the sending unit wire. Now, go back in the truck, turn the key on, buries the needle. That's a good thing. So I'm going to pull this gauge out, and I have got this marked on the back. Okay, you've got four prongs here. The 12 o'clock position is your ground, and I've also got it marked back here. 12 o'clock is ground. This is your uh, sending unit, which is the 3 o'clock position, and it's also located over here. And then on your driver's side, 9 o'clock position, you have 12 volt keyed power. Those are your contacts. This one down here is not used. However, if you have a gauge that's buried one direction, you can take this gauge, quick tip, 
flip it upside down and plug it back in. If the gauge goes directly the opposite way and buries the needle again, you've got a bad gauge. There are several different styles of sending units made for these GM V8s from the late 60s through the 80s. And not just in appearance, but in the ranges of resistance. But there were both spade connectors and what's called a nail head connector. Now you must match the sender to the gauge for the most accurate info. For example, you may have an early model truck with a late model engine and not realize that your temperature gauge is close, but it's not accurate. And these sending units can be found on the driver's side head between the number one and the number three uh, cylinder. So the GM1513321 sensor is correct for the 1973 to 78 C and K trucks with gauges. Those were used on all GM cars from 57 to 67. Uh, some GM products for another 10 years after that. When you order a sending unit, it is best to go by the manufacturer's date on the cylinder heads. And the reason I say that is you may have a 1974 Chevy pickup truck, but you may not realize that it's got a motor from a 1985. One of the problems people may not realize that stems from this is they've got an a, a gauge that just doesn't seem to read exactly the way it's supposed to. It may show that it's a little cooler or a little hotter than the actual engine temperature is. And that has to do with the difference in the uh, resistance from uh, the early model to the late model temperature sending unit. Okay, so I'm going to get into the weeds for a moment here and shoot out some, uh, some numbers. And these are important for reference or for testing. So you might want to write these down. But uh, for trucks from 1967 to 1973, the sender resistance when the engine is cold should be 350 ohms. And that same 350 ohm spec applies to units also from 1974 to 1978. However, for the 1967 to 1973 models, the temperature sending unit resistance when the engine is hot should be maxed out at 51 ohms. For the 1974 to 1978 models, it should be 46 ohms. For the later years, for trucks from 1979 through 1991, it should be 1365 ohms, 1,365 ohms, and that's cold. When the engine is hot, that temperature sending unit should read 55 ohms. So remember, the coolant sensor will give a high resistance reading when cold. Resistance decreases as water temperature increases, and in effect, it creates a better ground. So we're testing the coolant temperature sending unit. <clears throat> Key is on inside the truck. Go inside under the hood. Unplug the 12 volt power to the sending unit. Take a ground wire. Go to the negative side of your battery post. Connect one lead. And then ground your water temperature sending unit out. And what should happen is the needle should immediately go to the right past the symbol for hot. I'm using a red wire to simulate the 12 volt power that goes to the sending unit under the hood. If you unhook this with the key on and the needle on the gauge does not move, well then you've probably got either a malfunctioning gauge or a damaged or shorted wire. So earlier, I tested this by hooking the sending unit wire to the battery cable going to the negative battery post. Now to finish this test, I'll reattach the sending unit wire and see what happens when I send power to the switch. There we go, back to the correct spot on the gauge. When replacing these sending units, the factory recommends tightening these back to 20 foot-pounds. After 40 or 50 years, these OEM circuit boards do wear and they do get buggy. They collect moisture and dust, they will short circuit, they will burn. If you have got the dash out and you've already got some issues with either the lighting, turn signals, or your other gauges, now is the time to go ahead and just replace that circuit board. 
Fortunately, they're still available from aftermarket suppliers and they're not hard to locate. If you have your temperature gauge removed, you can access your gauge cluster and you can check the cluster plug for continuity. And you can do that by taking your test leads, going to the 12 volt keyed power side, which is the nine o'clock, and then connect your other lead to the 12 o'clock, which is the ground. If that's good, you can check for power at the three o'clock position plug, which is your sending unit circuit. And if either or both of those are showing no power, remember half of this circuit is ground. And a loss of ground or a poor ground, in my opinion, is the majority of problems with the uh, gauges on these, these old trucks and cars. Now, if for some reason you just can't figure out what's going on with your temperature gauge, you can bypass the original factory circuitry and just wire this gauge direct. And by that I mean just take a new wire and uh, run a nut down here on your top, which is your ground, and run that directly to the frame. Over here, you'll run another wire, uh, put a nut on it, tighten it down, and that will go directly to the temperature sending unit. And then over here, you would run another wire and it would go to your 12 volt key power in your fuse box. Just a final thought before I close this video out. I really enjoy driving these old trucks with the factory gauge clusters. However, they are not digital and they are not precision instruments. And over 30 years and some research, I've come to discover that a coolant temperature gauge can vary as much as five to 10%. And that's even with the proper circuitry and the correct sensor installed. Anyway, just food for thought. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you've got any questions, complaints, want to talk about your favorite flower. Leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, from American Outdoors, we will see you again soon. Bye-bye.